Look at like the patina on the bracelet. It's so nice. <laughs> Forget the watch. I the car. <laughs> One of the nicest examples I've ever seen. That Years ago, driving this and being the coolest. Hey guys, Adam from Mental Watches here. Welcome back to the channel. Today we're gonna do something a little different. Really cool in my opinion. Follow me. So today we are here at my good friend's auto source group in Miami. They are vintage car specialists. Last year, my buddy John Carlo, who's the owner of auto source group, came to me with an interesting proposition. He wanted to get me involved. I wanted to take a gamble. So we bought together a very, very cool Lamborghini Diablo SV, a car I know nothing about. Now, you guys know I buy and sell a lot of vintage watches, but I've never bought and sold a vintage car for business. I'd always done it for pleasure. Today, we're here to show it to my good friend Drew, who's considered buying it, take it for a drive, and maybe learn a little bit more about the car. Let's go take a look. Great. Great. And I never paid attention to Vintage Lambo. For me, it was never my style. Like, did not understand it. Mm -hmm. You know, we bought this car. It was cool. You know, it's a cool car. But now having driven it, I get it. I get it. Look, it's totally get it. It's just, it's also like very nostalgic too. Like I can picture myself like yeah. 20 years ago driving this and being the coolest guy. Oh, the and you're still <laughs> even now. 20 years later, no, still it's, the coolest it, guy. It's still in the world insane. Driving this car. You this know? car turns. The heads. presence is, is yeah. insane. So this is a '98 Diablo SV, one of 346 ever made to the entire run. It is a V12 manual five-speed transmission. Vehicle is a 300 car, so it's new, 17,000 miles, mostly original paint with minor touch-ups. Tell us, like, why is there such a like resurgence and like interest in these like 90s, 2000s? Eden's also good. Tasha's land. I think right now the ultimate collector market is anything manual V10 or V12 because they'll never ever make them again. Right. You know, Lamborghini put out the last V12 with the Vendor. Everything else is not going to be either hybrid or fully electric. So. I think sad time. This is a very sad, sad time. Then I think these will continue skyrocketing and preserve their value and pretty much serve as a asset. So we brought Drew here today. He's a good friend of mine. He's also a big watch guy, but he's also a big car guy. Right? He has some of the most amazing Porsches that I personally know of, uh, and I love Porsche. That's so. what I'm drawn to. But we were at dinner the other night, and I told him about we had bought this car. And he's like, wait a second. And I, and I told him apparently in Lambo world, correct me if I'm wrong, people like bright colors. So right. silver is not one of the more popular colors, but Drew and I happen to be on the same page that we <laughs> love silver colors. A lot of silver cars. All of my cars are silver. I don't know why, I just always am drawn to that color. And he wanted to come see the car. Or I think he wants to buy the car, but I can't speak for him. Yeah, absolutely. So, why don't you guys talk about it? <laughs> he, he was like, he's like, I'm gonna come to your office and buy a watch. I'm like, forget the watch, I'm the car. <laughs> What was the funnest part about driving it? Dude, it's click, click. Right. Click, click it. There's something to be said about a V12 with a gated chip. There, there's, there's, there's nothing like it. Like, like Drew just said, the clicking of the gearbox is, is just something you can't replicate in a modern car. It's killer. So you'll never beat that. No, and the pedals are close. Like, shifting it, heel towing, it's all easy. Like, it's an easy car for as, like, wild as the thing looks. It's just right there. That's it. That's it. The engine is awesome. V12s are phenomenal, but engines that are attached to the gated manual or like, you know, that, that's something else. As fun as this has been, because I could stay here all day and talk about cars, but they do need to get going. So we have to bring a client of Ally Hout Mork here to show some watches, which is what I actually do if you guys <laughs> And uh, yeah, I really appreciate you being up with us. I appreciate you coming by out and get the car to sell it before I leave. Show everybody what you wear. Let's get close in of this watch, because I think for me that's the coolest thing in the room. Ceramic perp. There you go. Ceramic it's still AP one of my favorite modern watches, bar none. Beautiful watch. Low key, but super cool. So you're trying to tell us you have good taste in watches and cars. There you go. Mediocre. <laughs> Mediocre. <laughs> Mediocre. <laughs> good taste in peak, guys. <laughs> Right, guys we're at stop number two of the day we're all playing with vintage lamborghinis is a lot of fun it's not generally what i do so we're here with my client outside of miami to show him some watches and hopefully get a deal going let's go inside it was only watches that i personally like and a lot of them came out of my personal collection to get started you know not that i 
collection was so big but uh and i would only sell watches that i liked why because those are the watches i knew so like you never saw these bigger like 44 millimeter watches on my website at right. the beginning because it wasn't what i was into so i didn't know the market and i didn't really sell them now i'll buy stuff that i personally won't wear or it's not my taste or it's too big or whatever but at least i will vet the watch and make sure that it's a good one speaking of that cold watch that one right there and so that is a gold the very first gold Submariner reference 1680 actile original fat font bezel insert which is important because a lot of them got replaced and you need to find the original one original bracelet really nice condition it's it's actually surprisingly very hard to find gold 1680 Submariners so incredible example of a gold 6265 circa my birth year 1985 uh -huh. again all original it looked the condition look at the case I'm polished there's even some nice patina on the side of the case original bracelet which is a very expensive part because they're very hard to find 7205 I like this watch this watch is a nice shape yeah. the next watch I brought the thing with this watch is is that it went to Rolex for service the dial and hands were changed to a service dial I have the original dial for it so I'm going to change it back and include the service dial with it but i wanted you to see just how nice it is the case condition sticker on the back full sad box papers and what what year is this yeah s serials like 1993 look at the condition on this watch as well also same thing box papers but look at like the patina on the bracelet it's so nice sticker on the back and i told you if you do buy both of them and again i will make sure this has both dials included and i'll install the have my watchmaker install the original dial 42 and 15 but you need to be extra careful when selling something to rolex i usually advise people not to send it to them uh, people like getting that service card though for pre peace of mind but if you send it to rolex they send you an estimate and they'll say case polish you know we were we recommend replacing dial and hands and you need to specifically tell them do not do this and even sometimes when you tell them not to polish a case they'll still do it you know you, you get lucky and they won't return the original parts if they replace them they used to they won't anymore so i usually recommend people if you don't need to send it to rolex do not send it to rolex you're just taking an unnecessary risk because rolex's whole thing is that when they service a watch for you they want to clean it up and make it look like it's brand new because you're marketing for them when you're wearing their watch you know you're literally advertising for them because people see it on your wrist they know it's a rolex they want it looking as new as possible so they want it looking as clean as possible so that's why they polish the case replace the defective parts or you know damaged parts and uh and, and they make it like a newer style watch that's you know more uh, state of the art and present um that's why they do that so they don't think of like oh you're sending this watch and that's 30 years old like the value is in the originality of the dial this that the other they're not thinking of it like that they don't care about what the resale value is or anything like that they just want your watch looking as new as possible watches this was the watch i told you on the phone i have not listed it yet because i wanted to show you first it is a 5512 four liner chapter ring unpolished beautiful dial original insert original bracelet the whole works wow that's well done it's a really nice watch the only flaw i could find on the dial is right by the base of the hands there's a little bit of drag which is very very common on these 5512s i would say the dial is a 9.5 out of 10. when you brought the light over i could see that a little. yeah 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 i mean but overall incredible example one of the nicest examples i've ever seen that i know of uh i know of a couple other that are really really mint but this one incredible like perfect dial perfect loom perfect case perfect bezel perfect bracelet just honestly it, it must have been stuck in a drawer for a very very long time like it's a once in a lifetime example kind of thing so pictures do it no justice at all the pictures look at the one lead. yeah look at the one it's, it's wow it's, it's it's a wow watch and the last watch i brought to show you which we briefly discussed on the phone my personal favorite dive watch the blanc pond 50 fathoms this one is a mil spec one which means military specifications which were created for military use it has a moisture indicator at the bottom which would change colors if water entered the watch because keep in mind divers were using this you know in operations that's there that's yeah at six o'clock right there and they basically tweaked a regular 50 fathoms to be for for what they needed it for for diving operations in military because they were not civilian issued you had to be in the military to get it i got into them simply because the aesthetic of the watch and how many of these were made any idea so we don't know production numbers blanc pond i don't think blanc pond themselves even know but if you look at the case back you'll see a serial number and it's usually four digits i've never seen one five so it's under ten thousand pieces overall throughout all time 
So this is modern day, right? Right. This is a little bit older. This it's seems like want. more like if your daily wear kind of stuff that you personally wear. Yeah, I, I wear this. I don't wear the gold. Pull that out. That's what I want to show you. Yeah. Like, but by the way, you're asking me if mine was reloomed or anything like that. Look at the, this is how these dials age with this beautiful pumpkin patina. They're almost identical. So what about the colors, right? So the color of the bezel? Yeah. This they one used on the early ones, either steel markers, uh, numerals, or gold. It could go either way. Enjoyment, I think. Okay. You know, having these three side by side is always cool, right? Look what you got. <laughs> uh, you didn't, I didn't see this last time. You must have gotten this. Oh, yeah, no, I got that on the down fly, right? Oh, so you have a 5512 chapter in Tulip. When we're talking about Tulip dials, we are talking about the coronet of the Rolex looking like a tulip. So you just see how it's a little flatter at the top mm -hmm. versus this Rolex coronet, which is a little more rounded. Mm -hmm. I would presume your watch is probably a little earlier than mine, but they're probably also very close in serial numbers. 61. Yeah, I think this is 62 if memory serves. Right. Um, but very, very close. I mean, aesthetically, they're almost one for one, you know? The depth ratings are a little different. You see how yours is a little more bunched up than mine is a little more spread out, but essentially the same exact watch, you know? So they're both beaters first, they're both the same. Yeah, I mean, it was just it just a production year later, they tiny little tweaks on the dial, tiny, tiny little tweaks. So that's what I'm saying. I wouldn't say that one's necessarily more valuable or more desirable than the other. It really boils down, in my opinion these days, to which watch is in better condition. This is a watch I bought that has a kit that is so full there's nothing better than a 6542. They're just the epitome of cool, knocking a design out of the park the first go. The case size of them, the no crown guards, the big light, like it just, it just has everything going for it. And they're so hard to find in this condition. They're so historically important. Uh, well, they're my favorite watch, you know, because the interest in watches, I don't see going anywhere, you know? Mm -hmm. And it's like right now what's happening with classic cars, for example, with all the EVs coming out, classic car prices are skyrocketing, you know, mm -hmm. because by 2035, we're not going to have any gas powered cars. Everything's going to be electric. I'm going to hate life, but it is what it is. Mm -hmm. But that's why all these cars are getting higher and higher because people are holding on to them because they know the coming tide. You know, and it's kind of the same with watches, you know, where it's like finding a watch like this in this example, in this condition is just impossible. And it's getting harder and harder because there's guys like you who are hoarding them and you're not the only one. So when the examples do hit the market in the years to come, I think we're just going to see an explosion. These are actual collectibles they are out of production. You're beholden to what's available. You're looking for stuff in good condition, which can be very difficult to find because they were watches that were used most of the time. Parts were changed, so you need to find original watches. There's not a lot out there. I think it's a, a supply and demand issue, and right now demand has been increasing steadily. I will take that. I will take um, the, the Sea Dweller. Okay. The 16523. So 16523. All right, cool. I'm going to leave you these two. Yeah. I'll send Jordan to get the Comex from you, and we'll talk about these throughout the week. Dude, thank you so much for having us here. Thank you for bringing yeah. out what you did. Thank I know there's a lot more to see. We'll have to do like another video sometime showing some of your other watches, your incredible collection. I uh, think that... Uh, I know it's hard to get them all in one place. I don't want to have one place right now. No, I know what I'm saying. I know you have them spread out, different banks. Dude, good seeing you again. Thank yeah, you so thank much. Thank you very much, man. It's always a pleasure. Always a pleasure. Good. All right, guys. Well, that was a really fun, long day selling Lamborghinis, selling watches. I'm really grateful to my client for allowing us into his home to look at some of his amazing watches and obviously concluding a deal with him for a few of them. Hope you guys enjoyed it. If you do like this content, please like, comment, subscribe, all the normal YouTube stuff and stick around because we're going to be doing a lot more of these videos and some other cool, interesting stuff for you guys to watch. Thanks, guys. Bye.